Hi everyone, in this screencast I'm going to show you a method for making objects on a slide appear in time with some audio narration that's being spoken. So on this slide I have a, an image and some labels on that image and what I want to happen is I want those uh, labels to appear as the audio is talking about that part of the machine. Now what I used to do uh, when I wanted to, to, to make something like this happen was I would play the the slide out in preview mode and then I'd have a stopwatch and I would write down the times when it got to that point and then manually line the, the objects up in the timeline. But thankfully there's an easier way and it's using a feature in Storyline called cue points. Now they're a little bit hidden I guess uh, but they're very powerful in what they can do and they're essentially a, a little mark uh, or reference point that we can put uh, on our timeline that we'll, we'll put it on the timeline when we want certain objects to appear and then we will line our objects up to the cue points so that they will appear on the screen progressively. Now what I'm actually going to do because I've got a few objects on this slide to save me from scrolling and using this scroll bar up and down I'm actually going to undock the timeline which is something you can do to make things a little bit easier. And by doing that, I can adjust the how much of the timeline is being displayed. But now I can see all of my objects. And what I have is for my three headings that I have, the group head, filter handle, and steam wand, I have label and rectangles. And at the moment, all of them are appearing at the same time. So they, and they appear for the entire length of the timeline. But what I want to happen is I want the, the group head info to appear, then the filter handle, then the steam wand as the audio was saying it. So to do that I can uh, use cue points and to put them on what I need to do is I can actually play the audio from slide view. There's a little play arrow down here in the bottom left hand corner of the timeline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the audio and to insert the cue point when I hear the part of the audio that's talking about each of those um, parts of the machine, I'm going to hit the letter C on my keyboard, the C key, and that will insert a cue point across the top of my timeline. So when you're doing this for yourself in your own projects, you'll have the objects that you will want to align to something, and you'll know a key word in the audio, so that when you hear that word, you have to hit the letter C uh, on the keyboard to, to insert the cue point. So I'm going to play the audio now. Now you probably won't hear it because it's running through my headphones that I'm using to do the demo. But if you keep an eye on the timeline above here, you'll see me as I'm striking the C key, you'll see the little cue points appear. So I'm going to hit play and then get my finger over the letter C ready to go. So what I was doing there was as it said, the audio said group head, filter handle and steam wand, I hit the C key on my keyboard and that put in a little cue point, a little reference point. Now one thing you can do with your cue points is, uh, and it's handy to know is that they're not necessarily fixed. You can move them by left clicking and dragging if you needed to. You can, right, if you right click while hovering over the cue points, you can delete a single cue point or all the cue points. So if you uh, don't quite get it right the first time, you can delete them off and start again. And what I can do now is I know I have my three cue points in. So when I want to make each of that in those objects appear, so to line my objects up with the cue points, I can do it two ways. One is to just drag the object along till it lines up with the cue point, just manually dragging it. The second option is if you select your object and then right click, down towards the bottom there's an align to cue point function and I can align it to cue point one. So again I'd have to know which objects align to which cue points. 
so align to cue point. The filter handle is cue point two. And align to cue point two. So this way, using this method, is nice and easy for us to get everything all lined up exactly where we want it to be. So now, each of my uh, labels and the little rectangle highlighting the particular part of the machine will appear progressively in the timeline. And look, if I wanted to, if I didn't want to, because now all of the, the objects are showing till the end of the timeline, what I could do is I could reduce the, um, the end appearance of them and maybe make them disappear off the, the slide so that I'm only sort of seeing one label and rectangle highlighting one part at a time. So that could be something that you might want to, to do. So now I have everything appearing progressively. And it's a, they're a good way of, of doing it quickly. Uh, and they also let you stagger the appearance of objects, text, information on the slide. So it's not all appearing at once. But when it does appear, it's, it's coming up and it's actually uh, lining up with the audio that's being spoken. So it can help make it a, a bit easier for people to, to learn and to pick up what you're saying. Well, that's it for me. That's using cue points. Uh, great little feature to use. Don't need to use triggers or anything like that. They're just all timeline based, but a really handy little feature for syncing objects in with audio narration. See you next time.